done closing for the day, the best idea was that actually fencing this whole property. So we already fenced majority of it. Having an access with a stair, we don't want people just to sit down there and socialize or kids just taking it as their corner without having it hidden in there when after we close and just securing and locking it will be a better idea. However, uh, another issue would be that door that leads to the restaurant on the corner. I don't think there's enough space per se to say. I don't think, I think, I think there's like a, what is that called? A little boulevard. Yeah. And I'm not sure there's going to be enough space or distance to, to have that clearance. One more question. I, I don't know if your architects have looked at this covered walk who needs to have a fire sprinkler. It appears to be connecting two buildings together in a, in a relatively, um, I don't know if it's A occupancy or not, but um, if these structures are supported in the building and it's made out of combustible materials, it may have to be sprinkled. So I don't know if you've gone that far into this, but that's, I mean, you're sending people between two buildings exiting large a large building. I'd have some concern about how that's all gonna work. Sure, I mean, the main reason we're doing this is just for the slip and fall and having it more yeah, convenient sure. for customers to walk through. Of course, if it is asked to be sprinkled and we do realize the cost is just nothing we can handle, we just simply won't do it. I mean, this is just a concession for the community leaders. They approached it and said, it would be a good idea if we can enclose it sure. in a way that, of course, it's not gonna be heated. There's no any kind of uh, machines or any kind of HVAC connected to it is just pretty much an awning that covers that walkway. Yeah. So if um, regulation does require sprinkling, I don't really think that we're gonna be proceeding with this specific development right here. Or do it in a way that doesn't connect the buildings. Yes. Commissioner Bender. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, um... I think folks have been asking good questions. I just wanted to note that we hadn't had the public hearing yet, and I imagine that that will bring up more questions. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know if yes, we wanted to move is, to that. That is a good point. So if, if there are no further questions of the applicant, we can move on to some other speaker. How, how, many, how many of you would like to speak on this item? So a handful of you. Uh, so I'll ask that uh, you come to the microphone and state your name and address for the record. Uh, and also just keep in mind, keep keep your uh, testimony to the applications that are before us. Obviously, we are all very familiar with this property and have considered other applications here. So we're familiar with some of the broader issues. So I uh, just wanted to make sure you're mindful of that. Thank, Thank you. you. Please My name is name Marjorie Magnuson. I live in the 2400 block of 11th Avenue. I'm the block leader for a uh, four square block area, which is affected by what's going on on that corner, 24th Street and 10th Avenue. Uh, the, uh, I, want, I just wanna comment on a couple of things, but I think others will comment. But just to comment that we've been here before and not much has happened since 2014. Um, things that were promised. Uh, I walked on my walk over here tonight. I walked uh, on uh, 10th Avenue and then 24th. The traffic was horrendous. Um, and then I walked in the mall, into the mall, and there was a security person sitting at a desk. And I just wanted, because I, I didn't have time to do it, but I wanted to say, you're supposed to be out on the street. Look at see what's happening out there with double parking and people getting left off. Uh, and then the porch uh, is, um, uh, it is a place where people are hanging out. Uh, it's not only for uh, the things that were mentioned, but it, people are hanging out on there because it's going ac across the whole building. Uh, so, uh, and my personal uh, feeling is that it's, uh, it's really ugly. So um, it's not that we don't support the business people. We've said this before. Uh, we've been accused of being anti-Somalian. Uh, we're not. Uh, my husband and I and also our son uh, are happy that they're there. We shop there uh, for certain things. It's better than 20, what, 27 years ago when we moved there and it was an empty building. 
dark and uh, nothing going on, uh, people loitering with not good intentions. So uh, that's all I'm going to say right now, uh, except one comment. Somebody mentioned this. Uh, what is it about our neighborhood that makes us not worth it to the city in taking action, any action that would bring relief? Thank you. Uh, who would like to speak next? Yes, and please state your name and address for the record. So, hello, my name is Fabian Morales. I live on the 24 block 10th Avenue. Uh, and I have a little more concern about uh, uh, what has been say on the documents that I present about the traffic. Uh, it is the size of the business. Um, to my understanding, that's a non-conforming business. And if I am correct, and when there is a business uh, accept as a non-conforming, it shouldn't be allowed to expand. <clears throat> and th there are a lot of people living there. I have a four years old and six years old. Yesterday, there were a, a fight with the current members with knife. And <clears throat> everything happens in that corner because people come in and get mixed, gets blended in with the good people. So not all of them, we're not saying Somalians is bad, we're not saying the business is bad. We're just saying that the, big is, the business is too big for the location where it is in. And, and the owner of the business is not finding any solutions to the traffic because he put a, a parking lot that is paid. So, and, and the, unload, the loading and unloading is gonna bring more traffic because it's gonna be people going through the street and the traffic is gonna have to stop for that. So all I'm saying that wherever is happening, wherever they're showing there is not attractive at all. Uh, and, and it is, it is hard for me. I, I moved into the neighborhood almost two years ago. I didn't know how the neighborhood was. I want a, a place where I could go out with my kids and take them out to walk and I can't because there's people loitering outside and it smells weed all the time and people walk in and out that business. So I cannot say anything because it is allowed, it's public space. Every day, every morning, our streets is full of garbage. I'm not retired yet. But maybe when I am, I might have time to go through like March dust every single day, picking up the garbage off the streets. And the business owners were asked to put some trash cans, which there is some, but they're full. They're not getting picked up uh, very often. So the garbage and the debris is just exploding out of those things. So I have a concern about the visibility, about concern about uh, um, a neat place to live and safe place to live. So, and, and I wish, I wish if I could um, motion to invite you guys to live in our neighborhood for a week and see if this is the way they make a sound, because that's not the way it is. Please help us to make the, if the business needs more space, make him reduce the size of the business. Do something, because all he's doing is expanding the business and make us, us hard to live. That's all I want to say. All right, thank you. And who would like to go next? Yes, please state your name and address for the record. Hi, my name is Lawrence Benson and I live in the 25th hundred block of 10th Avenue. So one block south. I've lived there for over 20 years. So I've seen kind of how things have gotten better as Marge mentioned, because we do have a tenant in that building and it's not vacant, but I've also seen things get worse as well. Um, as a result of Again, the traffic and the continued growth of the village mall. <clears throat> Even though, you know, semantics that were brought up earlier about not expanding, I mean, it is an expansion. <clears throat> um, again, as someone mentioned earlier, people congregate on that porch, like not just two people. Like I can stand on my step a block away and look down the street and see people standing on the porch and gathering around. So it is actually an expansion and the semantics to kind of skirt the expansion or, I mean, it's, I don't know, it's a little, um, I don't know, it's insulting really, to be honest, that, that they're trying to do this basically in our face and in your faces as well. We've been here before, you know, years ago. <clears throat> and, um, you know, Commissioner Bender actually, I think it was a couple 
years ago, maybe, <laughs> but this has been going on for a while, basically had the penultimate statement, which is that our neighborhood isn't made for a business like this. And so to continually force us to, first of all, live in that situation, but also continually email and write letters and come to you guys with the uncertainty of how our lives are going to proceed. You know, it's, it's not fair. I echo the sentiments of, you know, my co-residents who say, why is our neighborhood subject to this? It's not a good look. And the more that you potentially concede to illegal activity, right, because it was illegally built, then the more you say to this owner and other owners, not only in our neighborhood, but in the city, that it's okay, that as long as we can pay the fine later, then it's okay that we break the law. And I don't know about you guys, but as a citizen, I know I can't do that. So we're just asking that you please listen to what we've been saying for years and to not approve these expansions. Thank you. All right, thank you. And who would like to speak next? Yes, please state your name and address. I'm Raquel Bloom, and I live a few houses down from Market, and I've lived there for 11 years. Um, I would like to respectfully ask you to at least, if not deny, delay the decision on this application. Um, as a neighborhood, we feel like this process is broken. This process is broken because it has given a property owner, as has been pointed out earlier, who has a history of not complying with the rules, operating a parking lot without a license, cited June 2016, building an addition without a license, cited September 2016, and as this staff report cites non-compliance to a requirement from 2003, and not being a good owner, and not being a good neighbor, an incentive to take advantage of the city bureaucracy and the neighborhood. I would like to show you how to operate this. Can you see that? I just got this today, and this tells you that there was 2,400 traffic citation around the village market for 11 months last year. This is the actual citation. This is not the violations. This means that the actual violations would have been three, four, ten times this many. And um, it is um, offensive to me as a longtime resident to be told that I'm relitigating really, really something from the past because, sir, I live three houses down. And if somebody thinks we're relitigating something from the past, come live in my house for a day and live through all the road rage, all the honking, sustained honking, because drivers are frustrated. And this proves to you in numbers why drivers are frustrated, why people are angry. And for someone to say, oh, it's expensive to hire police officers, but I will put a substation, which is more expensive? I mean, it's just incredible to me. So never mind that all the tenants, all the guests of the tenants of that property and all the residents are at risk. Never mind that, it's too expensive to hire a security officer that will actually do the job. This is very insulting. And I also would like to say that this process is broken because the report in front of you is very insufficient. It does not take into account that there is no evidence that the suggestion that the change in that odd place for loading and unloading, as pointed out earlier, that there's any evidence that that will improve anything. What if things become worse 
And as we have seen, approvals you have made in this commission, not you personally, this commission has made in the past with good intention ended up having unintended terrible consequences that residents like me suffer every single day, day and night. Before I came here, all the honking, I can't even carry a phone conversation without interruption from all the sustained honking out there because there's a lot of anger. And you know what it does? It divides our neighborhood. Now, I would like to ask you, would something like this be tolerated downtown? Would something like this be tolerated in your neighborhood? Would you stand for this? Would you say, oh, okay, this is just an isolated application. And according to the limited report, uh, there's probably no problem. What if once again, the good intention produces unintended consequence and the approval is permanent? There's no recourse. I mean, you heard Brad, there is the TDMP from 2015 is question mark. There is nothing to enforce. These conditions, even if you add to this, what if it doesn't do what it's meant to do? Like asked earlier, who is going to pay for the consequences? My family, these families, those tenants, the customers of those tenants. Everybody else but the owner. This process is broken because it does not bring all the stakeholders in order to effectively address the real issues that we feel every single day. The livability has become ever worsening for the last decade. And the owner continues to profit from the business. Please, I plead with you. Have mercy on us. Thank you. Next speaker. Yes, please state your name and address for the record. Uh, my name is Jim Bloom, and I live at 2410 10th Avenue, just south of the of the uh, the market. Uh, I just really appreciate a lot of the questions that were asked of the applicant, because um, those are really ones that that affect us. So um, I do appreciate those kind of, because those are the very things that are, are on our heart and, and that we're asking. And I'm sure that part, some of that has come from the, the emails that have been sent in. Um, I think our first major objection to the permit is that unless we as the neighbors had discovered that and had reported it, it would have gone on without, um, without interference. And it would have been built and it would have been done without permit. Um, and uh, nobody would have done anything about it. After we discovered it, we had at least two other um, meetings with officials. Uh, Brad was a part of that to discuss mainly what had been before the TDMP uh, conditions that were supposed to have been put in place that we had asked for when we were talking about the expansion. Would you please do these first before anything else is done so that we know that there's some good faith on your part to handle it, mainly do dealing with the traffic, littering, loitering issues. So that's one of the, the first things. Uh, we believe that to approve the permit is to reward continued resistance to those conditions um, and attempts to circumvent the permit process and just keep the residents from involvement in the decisions that are, are being made. Um, we were told when we met the city officials that we would be notified that the permit was submitted and was ready to go, and we didn't find out about it until uh, Hillary's report came out just a, a week or week and a half ago that we got word that this was going to happen. Um, the audits, it was even mentioned in the report that the audits that were meant for the applicant to do have never been complied with since 2003. And then in the report, it's saying, we're gonna give you an extra year to comply with the audits. We don't feel that that should be allowed to happen um, until the previous audits have, have been done, right? Until it's been done on the property that the things that have been asked for is particularly regarding 
uh, the traffic issues be taken care of. The owner hasn't shown any willingness to meet with the neighborhood, to meet with the residents, to meet with planners, to try to come up with a workable solution. We know that we have asked before that he attend certain meetings, this was even before, and, and hasn't shown up. We think good faith would have said, before offering a permit, can we meet, because we know there's a problem with, with uh, what's happened before with the residents. Can we meet and can we talk about, will this be a solution to the problem? But there's never been any willingness to do that. Um, we've asked repeatedly, which you have brought up, some kind of off-duty police officers or somebody who will direct traffic, who will direct the flow, um, but nothing has been done for that. In the end, we just feel like if you allow the work to be done without compliance first, with the previous conditions, there's no reason, and you brought this up, there's no reason to believe that it'll be done because it hasn't been done before. Once the work is done, it's irreversible. And there's nothing that's been shown so far that the owner honestly desires to work with the residents around the mall for a workable solution. So we'd ask that you would not permit that to happen to go for that um, application to go through until we deal with the issues that are at hand already. The parking lot that they're asking for loading and unloading and saying that this is going to be helpful for congestion, we really don't think that's going to happen. You have gates in front of those. You have people stopping and waiting. It's going to just increase already what's already a long wait and honking and people double parking. It's only going to increase that. It isn't going to decrease it. And you could see that if you just stood out there for a while. Just to turn down 10th Avenue creates a huge block as people are trying to find places to park right there, et cetera. Thank you. Right, thank you. And is there anyone else who would like to speak? Yes, please state your name and address for the record. Uh, my name is Ryan Billig. I live in the 2200 block of 10th, uh, directly across from the mall. Uh, probably couldn't add anything to what my neighbors have said um, fully, but I, I, I think I would say that the applicant is asking the commission and the neighbors to forgive the even very recent illegal activity that, you know, as a as a experienced developer, shouldn't have happened in the first place. They've even acknowledged that. Why? Why would they do that? It seems to redirect attention from things which. Maybe um, I think they're also asking us to forget their promises from that we've been waiting for them to fulfill for years, year after year after year, 12 years. And uh, they would also like a timely approval of whatever application they put forward, in this case, this one. And I would just suggest that's fair. Let's give them a timely, a timely approval um, based on their conception of timely. That would put us at 2028 or beyond. Thanks. All right, thank you. And is there anyone else who would like to speak? Yes, please state your name and address. Good evening. My name is Victor Yapa, and I live across uh, the, the, the mall from Sorry, Mall. And this is my concern. Uh, to begin with, this porch wasn't there before, it wasn't a porch. It was just a, a area that had had some rails before. And that was the first thing. Um, I'm totally against that. People hanging there all the time in that corner. The security guys they have, or the, the guards they hire for apparently to take care of the mall or the area around, it is just most of the time one person probably on weekends too. And the person is always sitting inside, okay? And the person doesn't come outside to see what's happening, either to direct the traffic, make people move forward, or stop the honking. The security guy doesn't do pretty much the job that I'm not sure what was the job that he's intending to do in, inside the mall. Um, that's one thing. Another thing is the garbage. 
there is not they have people to, that cleans the area but doesn't go through the whole block around the area um, they need this garbage can or something to put a, at least every corner should have one another thing is the besides the honking um, the parking lot all the time is crowded the parking lot and also the parking space on the street where we the neighbors you know can share but most of the time there is no parking space for us a long time ago i remember in the meeting on midtown they say they will allow us to have some parking space if you guys are going to have a, a some kind of let's say family reunion you can come over and let us know and we can give you some space but apparently that doesn't being committed at all. Um, that's that's pretty much it. I'm not happy with this porch. I, I really want them to look the neighbor first, look for us, the ones who live there, before to move forward. I think the best thing is to enhance the security in the area in order to enhance the beauty of the aesthetic of this building. Thank you. Right. Thank you. And is there anyone else who would like to speak? Yes, please state your name and address. That's okay. Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Abdullahi. I'm one of the uh, those communities who are students over there. And uh, I have seen here today a lot of people who are against for that issues, who already prepared themselves for a better way, better than us. We just did not prepare anything for, uh, for this issue. But we can talk, we can say just we, what we know, what we have seen, what we experienced. Um, we have uh, their business. And beside of the business, we are a large community over there. There are old men, young women over there. Some of them have uh, uh, mosque over there. They come and pray. Some of them, they just they have uh, land. Some of them, just they have business. Beside of that, we have everything has bad thing and good thing. Everybody knows that. We have a lot of uh, good stuff over there. We have a culture which uh, good for everybody. As a neighborhood, we lack everybody who are around there, and nobody wants us to make uh, to cause any harm for his neighborhood. We lack neighborhood and. Unintentionally, sometimes it might happen something for uh, the trash that they have talked about. Nobody knows that over there, or nobody wants us to throw away front of his business to damage his own community. Nobody wants that, and also to harm his neighborhood to throw away trash or something bad. And we have over there like thirty uh, trash can that's supposed to throw in, maybe. I don't know, uh, and I've not seen for later day, these days any trash that was thrown the street. I myself, if I say anything, even outside of that area, anything that was uh, thrown away that can harm anybody, I took and um, put uh, where it's supposed to, to be. Um, culturally, we don't like to harm anybody or we don't like to cause any bad consequences to happen and all what i want to say is if we have number very few number over here right now if they should know that maybe i i can say we are very innocent for what uh, our opponent is saying today if they should know or should have any idea what is going on right here they should come up and say what they have and what they just see uh this opponent is saying and I'm very sorry to uh, my uh, neighborhood to complain about that. And if there is anything, uh, you are the, over, over here as a, uh, you can just see, you have the judging for both hands. Those people who are large, who have uh, good stuff over there, having their lives over there, have, having their 